Hey folks, it's Ridgar here, how you doing? Welcome back to Minecraft. If I do one, two, three, four, like that, and then we'll have a gap, one, two, three, four, and I'll do one in the middle of each of the sets of torches, like this. I don't know what requirements there are for growing the trees. I don't know how much space they actually require in order to properly be able to grow. There's something about a diagonal off of one of the corners has got to be clear in order for them to grow. I don't know what that is, though. I, I, I don't know what diagonal and where it's got to be and, and so on and so forth. So if you look here, I'm planting all of these and I'm spacing them apart a little bit. I could probably space them a bit further apart, but I'm quite happy to do it like that. So there, we've spaced them apart. That gives us 3 by 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. So we got 15 trees that we've just gone and placed down there. Yeah, that does make sense. We had 60 saplings, didn't we? 15 trees I've just gone and put down there. Eventually, some of those will grow. If I've got uh, plants, I could go and find my compost bin and I could go and get a whole load of bone meal in there we go and chuck some plants in I've got a sapling, I've got some apples there, I've got a bit of melon, I could go and harvest a whole load more, I could harvest these potatoes, I could just chuck those in let's do that let's do it, let's let's harvest the potatoes and chuck them in, I've got mountains of tatey poes here, look at this look at the tatey po harvest coming in here, this is amazing now we're talking that is a lot of tatey poes. Right. I have no room for any more tatey poes. I have used up every single one of them. I'm going to eat steak. Like that. I've got no room for extra torches in here. I've got one oak sapling right there. So I'll chuck that one down because quite frankly that's probably the least valuable of anything. And yeah, right. I need to just start planting potatoes. As I plant the potatoes, the ones on the ground, we will start to use them up. We'll start to pick them up in place of the ones that I'm chucking into the ground right now. At least that's the plan here. Whether my plan is going to actually work and be foolproof. I'm still not going to be able to pick them all up. <laughs> there is a lot of potatoes on the ground here. I've picked up every potato that I can. I've got these. Uh, I've got poisonous potato there. You know what? That egg. I'm just gonna. I'm gonna chuck the egg away. All right. I don't actually need that egg, and I've chucked one sapling away. Let's go out through here, and then we'll go in this way. So poisonous potatoes. I don't know what you can do with them. There, we get a bit of bone meal there, and I'm just going to keep doing this now. Slinging these in like this, and then we'll get a bit of bone meal and I'll be able to go and use that on the trees over there. That's the idea with this. Right. You can't put bone meal in, fortunately. That's good. I don't want to be able to put bone meal in there. And fill that one up, and then go with the next lot of potatoes. Does it work with a dispenser? Now, if we had a dispenser dispensing into the compost bin and we had a hopper underneath it to collect up the bone meal that spits out from once it's all finished, does that work? What are we doing now? There, right. I got seven potato. Let me change that over. Uh, right, yeah, I had 64. Now we got 46. So. It takes 18 potatoes to fill this one up. So every 18 potatoes... Oh, wait. Yeah. Is that 18? That's 34. And then down to... Oh, it was 10 potatoes. That's only 10 needed there. That's four... What? Why am I getting different numbers every time? Is that, is that supposed to be how it works? Like a, a random number goes in? Because we're definitely getting very different numbers coming through on this. And I didn't think that it was supposed to do that. 
Right. Well, I've got some bone meal here. There is a zombie there. The trees are already growing. And growing nicely. So I've got one zombie over there. I'm going to ignore him. I'm going to pretend that he's not doing anything. I'm going to go back in here a minute and just pick up these couple of items that we left behind. Not that they really matter. And I'm going to go off and get a bit of sleep. I think we'll do that. All right, I went and got some sleep, and we have a brand shiny new day. We're going to want to get all the way up there and start doing some work soon. So I'm going to build a ladder all the way up the side of the cliff there, and then we'll do a long drop as well so that we can easily get back down again. I just watched a squiddy come in here and suicide himself right on that bit just there. Before I go doing the, um, you know, putting a ladder up and start sort of doing a little bit of construction work on this library that I want to build, there is one other thing that I want to do first. I want to find the spawn chunks. Now, I did actually think about doing this off camera because it's a little bit of an involved process, but I thought, well, no, we'll do it. I'm going to put my camp bed in here for a minute. We'll do this sort of together so that you can all see how, you know, what's involved with the process of finding spawn chunks. It's quite a useful little thing, and once we've found all of the spawn chunks, it means that we've then got uh, quite a useful thing that we can go and do stuff with. Um, we know where the boundary is on our property here, and the inside the boundary is basically the squares that stay permanently loaded so you can build redstone contraptions farms things like that and they will run regardless of where you are on the map if you build stuff outside of that it only runs when you're within range so i wanted to do a bit of work on that uh before i head up to the top um let me just go in here. Right, I got some cooked chickens there. Let's put a bit of raw mutton in there. We'll go into this chest and we'll dump those apples, those bones, that bone meal, those ink sacks. Bit of white. Oh, I haven't got room for white wool in that chest. I've got room for white wool in that chest, though. And where have I put the poison potatoes? There, I got I got one, so now I got three more. I don't know what to do with the poison potatoes, to be honest. Really thought about that. I got a bit of string right there, which we'll dump in. I'm carrying around a sapling. Yeah, I'm just gonna dump the sapling down here. I'm gonna plant that one right there. I'll probably regret that, because it's just gonna grow and then it's gonna make a mess. Right, anyway. Um the spawn chunks. Now in order to find those, you need to find where you originally spawned uh, before you had a bed. And the easiest way to do that is to die and then spawn on your spawn chunks. But I already know kind of where they are, and that is X190Z0. That's roughly where our spawn chunks are. So we're going to bring up the numbers like this, and I need to go to Z0, which is actually quite a way in this direction compared to where our base itself is. So I'm going to, and it's like it's, it's down in this little bit of a valley. So I'm running up through here like this, and there is Z0 here. So, we're, we're, this is Z0 here, and then X190 puts me down over here. This right here is roughly where we originally spawned, right? Very roughly where we originally spawned. We've got a bit of a tree right here, which I'm just going to get rid of a few bits. Um, I tell you what, let's, let's dig that one out. I'll get rid of this one here completely, so that one is gone, and then the leaves will disappear as well. So, from here, this is where I can find out where the actual spawn chunks are. This is a little bit more difficult, so what you've got to do is you've got to walk in a straight line out from where you spawn. Now, I can move the spawn chunks 
rather than leaving them right here, because the, the main issue I've got with where the spawn chunks are right now is that it goes... You go a set number of squares in one direction, so we're going to... Basically, our spawn chunks are going to be somewhere between uh, roughly minus 120 and 120 on the Z line, and then 75 and 320 on the x line that's, that's roughly well that's actually where i've got to sort of start measuring from but this is the center point of our stuff so just over there like i think our base is within the spawn chunks but most of our spawn chunks are out over this way out over there so i'm wondering about whether i should move the spawn chunks before i start doing anything and move them to the center of our base in there that might end up being a more beneficial thing to go and do and you can do that fairly easily with a command and i mean it, it definitely seems like it would be a more sensible option rather than having them from here because i mean we should still be within the spawn chunks over there on the base but is all of that out over that way like we, we got a long way all the way around this side where the rest of it would be in Honestly, it's, it's kind of like I wasn't planning to go that way. I wanted to sort of put it around our mountain rather than our mountain just being in one corner of it. Um, even if I move the spawn chunks over so that like the center point of it is over on there, like right in front of the sheep pen, and then we've got the bulk of it out this side, but then there is some out that side of the mountain as well. I, t I tell you what, rather than committing to anything just yet... I'll leave this bit right where it is. I'm going to put that one there. I'm going to move out over to the side like this. And I'm going to put a torch on each side. I know it's not quite as high a pillar as I had just a second ago. But I think this one will be all right. And then I want to get down off of here without perishing. Uh, well, sort of. And then I'm going to go and I'm going to start measuring out where they are. So your spawn chunks, they go out a set distance from you. Uh, I just, let, let, let me just check that again because I can't remember the numbers. Right, it's 240 by 240 blocks. So roughly 120 blocks in that direction is going to be the first ones. Now we're on 190, so roughly 100 and 20 from here at 190 that's gonna put us at uh 310 so at around block one, uh 280 just to be on you know just to be on the safe side 280 that's where i'm going to start measuring it out from and then we'll come back and we'll go out that way and we'll do something over there as well and i'll show you what it is that we're going to go and do so it will We'll keep that one. We'll keep these numbers up for a minute. So I want to go to block uh, 280 for our first bit. That's where we want to go, which is all the way through here. So it's slightly inconvenient. I've got to dig my way up. Let's, let's just get rid of that. And we will dig our way up to block 280. I'm just going to make a proper staircase all the way up like this. Because, I mean, it does depend largely on where the blocks end up being as to whether or not I end up uh, using the spawn chunks just as they are or if I do indeed actually decide to go and move them. I'm sus I suspect I'm going to want to move them. I reckon it's probably just going to be better for us if we do. So I'm going to go up like this. We're actually going to want to go and get a bit of sleep in a minute because we've got nasty things going to be spawning in a minute. Uh, I'm going to put a torch up there. And yeah, we're going to have very nasty things spawning here in a second. So let's quickly get back to home. I'll have the diamond sword out and ready for anything that does decide to come along and give us a kiss. And hopefully we can avoid anything giving us a kiss. Uh, I'm not entirely hopeful about that at this point because it's getting darker and darker by the minute. Uh, but no, if I go, if I race all the way back here, there is a zombie just over there. Um, take him out a minute. Like that. 
<laughs> right. Get rid of him a second, and then I'm going to come back over here, and I'll just have a quick look at the numbers again, see how much out of the spawn chunks we are with where we're positioned right now. Let me just eat that, and then eat a steak so that we get the maximum hunger benefit. And if we go F3 onto here... 240 we're on x240 right here so we should be well within the x range and 94 we should be within the z range as well i mean it's only 20 blocks away from us would be roughly where the edge of the spawn chunks are which means that if we don't move the spawn chunks we can't really build very much out that way that will stay on and permanent. It's all going to be out that way. I mean, there is sort of an argument in favour of that. It does mean that all of our stuff is sort of going to be out the back next to all of the gardens where we've already got the cattle and the sheep and stuff. And it's probably going to be easier to dig stuff out on that side than it is to dig stuff out over on this side anyway. So, you know, maybe putting the spawn chunks there is not such a bad idea. But I'll tell you what we will do before we go any further away. If we go and have a look here. Now, X needs to be at 120. Or it's going to be roughly 120, which is only just down there. Right? We're ri literally just on the edge of it. So what you do is you start throwing down bits of cobblestone like this so if i walk along right i don't want to chuck them out quite that fast but basically i need to walk along like this throwing cobblestone in a line like that and this will tell me where the edge is in a minute it won't tell me yet it'll tell me in a minute so i'm going to chuck that all the way along there like that and then i don't want to pick any of it up so i've got to avoid it which means i'm just going to have to sort of swim all the way back uh which is fine but i need to avoid touching those blocks so the very first thing that we want to do and this like I'm not sure how long those blocks are going to stay there and whether or not we've got time to deal with them. So we're going to leave the blocks alone. you got to do this. It, it takes five minutes to do each side. And this, this is the time-consuming bit. I'm going to put a few more. I'm going to chuck a few more out here. I'm just pressing Q, by the way, to throw these out onto the floor. So I'm going to put a few more out to there, like that. And you can see them there. They're all sort of floating on the ground like that. Now, what we do next is we go into our base and we go to the nether. So we go in here and we run all the way back down to the bottom where we've got our nether portal. And we go into the nether and we wait there for five minutes. While we're there for five minutes, our entire base, everything in the overworld will unload. All right? All of it will unload and it, will just, it literally will just freeze exactly as it is right now. Apart from the spawn chunks, they will stay active. So if we go through here and we wait for five minutes, I'll time it and I will do five minutes in here. Let's see if I can maybe find something useful. Let me have a sword, I suppose. Uh, if we wait for five minutes in here, when we go back, so I'm, I'm going to set a timer. I'm, I'm just sort of looking at the time right now. When I go back in five minutes time, um, the blocks that we threw down that are actually on the spawn chunks, they will have disappeared. They will have despawned. Because they, once they're out for five minutes, they despawn. The blocks that are outside of the spawn chunk area, they won't despawn. They will still be there. And that's how you find the outside edge of your spawn chunks. So we've got to do this four times. We've got four different sides. We've got to do this four different times. Uh, in order to be able to properly find everything that we want to find in here uh, or out there. So it, it'll take a minute or two to do it. All right, it's, it's not an instant thing that's going to happen, but it's worth it. It's worth knowing where those spawn chunks are. Now, I don't want to get too involved with the lava right there, so I'm going to go over this way. I'm keeping an eye on the time. I also want to avoid the piggies over there. 
just grab a few bits of this. I'm not concerned about picking up other stuff. There's gold up there. I'm not really too concerned about that. Some glowstone dust would be nice. And I do want to get a little bit more of this. And um, you can see that we're able to dig very, very easily. See? With this pickaxe. Very, very easily with this pickaxe. is ridiculous. Um... Just wander down this way. Uh, can I reach? I can't reach up there. Come back over here. Okay, so at the moment, there's nothing particularly dangerous that we've got to worry about, which is good. I'm, I'm very pleased with that. I don't want anything really dangerous and nasty causing us any problems. I want to avoid problems. I just want to be able to hang around here for a bit and then go home safe. That's, that's, that's all I'm really after at the moment. There's more soul sand in there. There's a room here. Yeah, I'm thinking I might actually try and fill this room in and then go up and, and get some of that gold up there. Could be an interesting thing to go and do. And then we've got a bit of soul sand right here. Can I dig that out? Yes, I can. Right. Dig out the soul sand right here. Soul sand is useful for some things. I've got a little bit of netherrack there, which I will go and place in. Let's just plonk a few bits of these down. Like that. Right, and then I want to go in here. <laughs> this pickaxe is amazing. <laughs> oh, this is absolutely brilliant. It's it's the, the the stuff up there that I really want to be careful of. That's that's the bit that I really want to be careful of. So I'm gonna try and just like fill in a little bit of the floor right here, like this. It's a deep pool underneath us, by the way. So we do want to be a little bit cautious about that. It's full of lava in here. We we we, we do we we don't want to be taking any silly chances. I have no intention of taking chances and doing daft things while I'm waiting in here. I, you're okay, right, I didn't actually mean to do that, but still. Uh, let me go here. <laughs> I love this. Oh, we are going to be able to dig so much with this axe and so fast. The problem is it will wear out the durability a little bit. Right, it, it will eventually wear out the durability a bit. And then you have things like that happen as well, which don't help. But, I mean, as long as we don't get too close to any of it, we should be fine. You do have to be very careful digging in the nether, though. All right, you, you, you just have to be careful digging in the nether. It just goes without saying. Right, if I block that off, lava behaves like water in the nether, for those of you who are unaware. So if you're in the nether and you're doing stuff, you, you've got to be careful, you've got to be cautious, because lava will spread the same kind of distance as water will in the overworld, and that can make life difficult for you if you are not wary and cautious at all times. So let's put this back in here like this, and I want to fill all of this up so that we are making it safe. There, right. We are now safe in here. There's a little bit of gold up there, and I was kind of thinking, I won't go and get that before we leave. We've got about a minute left, so it's not going to hurt just to take a little tiny bit of extra time. Let's have a look around. We will... Right. You can quickly get rid of any burning if you want to, just by right-clicking. Oh, no thought right clicking if, if if I remove the actual block like that that does get rid of it there like that uh, there's a bit up here that we want to get rid of we get rid of some some I'm getting rid of some of the fire I'm not too concerned about lots of the fire though but some of it would be good to get rid of and I think we're pretty much safe to go back to the overworld I'll take this uh oh. Uh, I really, really hope. Did you hear that noise? A bit like a baby. That is a ghast. 
And they are not nice things. That They spit balls of fire at you. For those of you who are unaware. And they are generally just unpleasant creatures. And they can blow up your base. Uh, not your base. That They can blow up your portal. And just generally make life rather difficult for you. So we, we don't want that. I do, however, have a nice lot of gold over there that I want to go and get. And I missed. Right, well, in which case, let me go on to here and I will mine the rest of this up here like that. Up there. I go over and get that gold that is there. That's what I want. I want to, I want to bring that down to me. I mean, not that not that the gold really makes a big amount of difference to anything, but, you know, I've, I've gone to the trouble of mining it out now. I, I kind of want it. Oops. Uh, there. That's what I want to do. Right, jump over fast like that. Grab it. I don't think there's any more up here. I think we... Uh, I think I picked all of it down. Um, if I didn't get all of it, well, too bad. It'll be fine, because th this some other bits elsewhere but that's that's more than enough time i should think so if we jump back into the portal disappear out of here it's a dangerous place down here anyway we don't want to spend too long in there and excellent right so i've got some netherrack i'm going to leave the netherrack down here uh, i got 30 gold nuggets there and 36 bits of nether quartz which is rather lovely those aren't the important bits right now. The important bits right now are the um, bits of cobbly stone that we left outside up here. And that's what we want to go and find right now. So, oh. The ones... Well, nothing's despawned. I haven't lost anything at all. Have I, was I not gone long enough? So a lot of what I've just said about finding spawn chunks is accurate, and a lot of what I've just said is completely and utterly wrong. They changed it a lot in 1.14, which I have since found out. So I'm going to be removing quite a big chunk of the recording, which is all about um, me trying to find out where I've gone wrong and so on. You still can throw down blocks like this, but the numbers for the uh, chunks, they're slightly different, and I will show that. That'll actually be in the next episode. But you can no longer go to the nether in order to get things to despawn. That doesn't work anymore. You need to go at least 15 chunks away from where you've thrown everything down. Uh, but you've got to stay in the overworld. I don't know why that's been changed, but it has been. So you'd still, you have to stay in the overworld now in order to be able to make it happen. Uh, everything else I do eventually figure out. Uh, ignore the numbers that I said. The, the block counts. That's now wrong as well. They changed the area of the spawn chunks. It's now actually bigger than it used to be. So I'll let you get back to watching my bumbling around now. Right, it may be that I'm looking at old information, so that apparently might be how Spawn Chunk... Well, unfortunately, folks, that is all we have got time for today. If you have time, do please consider checking out the links in the description down below. There is one for Nitrado, who provide gaming servers, including but not limited to Minecraft and Farming Simulator. And there is also Fanatical, who sell vast quantities of computer games at very reasonable prices. There is also a discount code in the description alongside the link. If you've enjoyed this video, then please head down below and give us a like. And if you really enjoyed it, then please tell your friends all about me. Get them to come and watch as well. That would be awesome. And until next time, thank you very much for watching. This is Frithgar. Goodbye, and see you later.